Um, okay, so uh, one 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 one. So let me ask you this first off. Nine nine nine. What do I get when I add one to that? Yeah, zero zero zero, and then it rolls over into that spot, correct? So if I have base two and I add one to this. Exactly the same thing's going to happen. Exactly the same thing's going to happen. One plus one is two. 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 Let me make sure I'm in the two. One plus one is two. Carry the one. Did I get the right number of things? Two, four, six. So. Whatever base I'm in, if I, if I have uh, all the highest digits, when I add one, I'm going to roll over to the next place. I have to, because these are absolutely full. You guys agree? So if I had four, 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 base five, plus one, that would be 1,000. Okay. Okay. And now it's easy. What's the next number after that? Add another one, yes? What do you get if you add a one to this? One, zero, 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 one, yeah. And then add another one. So now you start to understand, why do I carry a one when the answer is 10 or bigger in base 10? Because I'm in the next place now. So if the highest single digit base two is one, I add a one, I must be in the next place now, and I'm in the next place, in the next, oh shit, and of course it just carries over, yes? <laughs> I like it. something I just like watching people. People sometimes do this. <laughs> I'm like, okay, not sure what that means. Do you sort of get the idea? I mean, again, you can make analogies with our number system. Everybody agrees this is true, yes? We just don't even think twice about this because we grew up in this shit. If you're trying to learn German now, mm. are you going to have a lot of trouble at the beginning? Because you didn't grow up with it. Do you have any trouble with English? Sure, but I can, I can communicate in English. My grammar may not be the best in the world, but I can communicate in English. Um, so this we do without thinking, but that's the same thing. The exact same thing happens there for the exact same reason. Okay. Um, 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 um. Anything else from homework stuff? Or? Yes. You said one more. That's okay. Uh, okay. Oh, I forgot to say this. I don't know if you guys have run into this. This book for base 12 uses freaking T and E for 10, 11. That is dumb. Because we've already established A is 10, B is 11, yes? Yes. So I'm going to use A, B for 10, 11. I don't care what higher base I'm in. The book uses E and T, which is dumb. Now, base 16, they use E for, uh, you know, A is 10, B is 11, blah, 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 right? Uh, so you said 22, which part? B? The whole thing, okay. Hexadecimal digits are base 16, they tell you. So what's A mean? Yeah, so and here, so we got the number. We have the number A4. What place is that in? One's place. What place is this in? So my next immediate thing is to translate. Sort of like if I had Babylonian and you saw this dude, what is that? So you'd immediately make it 10, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so I see A. I immediately make it 10, because that's what A is. So there's 10, 10 sixteenths plus 4 ones. And we had a big discussion about it. I really hope you guys understand. If I have base 5, what's the highest single digit? If I have base 10, what's the highest single digit? If I have base 16, what is the highest single digit? 15. So I need a single digit symbol for 10. We don't currently have it. We just chose A. We could have chosen anything. We could have made it a little happy face. We could have made it a star. You know? But we were like, let's just use letters. 
You guys kind of with it? A little bit? And I showed you like they use it for hexadecimal, for um, coding stuff, for computer languages, uh, for web pages to do the colors. I think I showed you that? Yeah. Yes, okay. Do you suddenly have to know how to computer code in Java? No, don't worry. I just want to show you an example of it in the real world. Is that, is that all right? So to do the same thing with part B, how do you figure out what E is? A is 10, B is 11, and you keep going to get to E, yes, okay. So there's a question in the book about what base would it be if we used all the letters of our alphabet as symbols? Yeah, and why is it base 26 though? You gotta be careful, not just because there's 26 numbers, because if I have base 26, what's the largest single digit I need? 25. But what would something have to be? Don't I also need the number zero? I like it. Okay. So allow yourself that this is weird. Allow yourself that this is freaky. Allow yourself that this is not something you work with a lot, ever. Go into this understanding that. And this becomes more of a puzzle. This becomes more of a, let me look at the examples. Let me kind of feel this out. Okay, so don't get down on yourself too much. If you're having a lot of trouble, you're kind of supposed to be. Because again, these are the troubles your students are gonna have as they're learning base 10, because that's just as new to them, if you're lucky enough to get that young of the kids, if that's what you want. Um, just as new to them as this stuff was to you, All right? So before we jump back into this, does anyone else need a copy of this sheet here? The one with all that, the one with the comic from the 60s in the corner up here? Okay. Anyone? Anybody else? You guys all got that? Okay. I think uh, so we did number one, yes? Mm -hmm. And we started number two? Yeah, the last thing I talked about was number two becomes like a number puzzle. We did two. Yeah, we did number two? We got the answer and all that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So somebody remind me, if you're doing this homework in chapter one, and you're trying to apply the ideas, and you just can't seem to get the answer, except the end of the world, what's the most important thing to show me? The work. What approach are you using? Again, it's really easy to make one little mistake. You're using the right approach. You make one little mistake. It throws it all off, and you're like, you have no idea. So here's what I'd like to tell people. Very often, when you don't understand something, you feel like you're this far away when very often you are this far. You don't understand it, so you have no idea how to gauge how far you are from understanding it. Okay. So let's look at number three. I like this one a lot. Oh. Work in this room. Give me just a moment. I remember which thing it is to do this. It's not that one, Jeff. Okay. This one, right? No. This might be the room I never got this to turn off. Yes, this is the room that that just does not turn off. Okay, okay, sorry. So look at number three. Um, so before I put you guys into groups, let's talk about this. They, kind of, they tell you, it kind of makes sense to draw a picture here, yeah? Does somebody notice something about this problem? 
is this a like a large problem? Meaning, if you drew the picture, would it end up being kind of a big, relatively big picture? You guys see what I'm saying? How long is it every side? 180 freaking feet. Yes. So I'm not saying go draw it in real size, <laughs> but would this be kind of a big thing? Because how far apart is every post? Every six feet. So aren't you going to have a lot of posts? You guys kind of with me? Okay. So there's a method that we haven't talked about yet, but that works beautifully for this problem. And it's called solve a simpler problem. So for example, um, let me see if I can make an example up here. What if I told you that we are traveling at 147.983 feet per minute and we have to go um, 987.56 feet. How long would it take us? How do you feel about that problem? That problem sucks ass. Okay, so what if I solve a simpler problem? What if I say we're going 10 feet per minute? How do you feel about that so far? Is that better? And then I say we have to go 20 feet. 20 feet, Jeff. Can anyone tell me how long that would take? 10 feet a minute, I want to go 20 feet. How long would that take? Two minutes. What did you do with the numbers? You took 20. Divided by 10, yes? You stop for a minute. This is a beautiful place. This is not where we're necessarily going to apply this, but this, when I do uh, algebra or something on like that level, very often what gets in the way is the numbers. Your brain sees the numbers and goes, what the shit? So if you were just replace them, I didn't change any physical aspect of the problem. I just gave myself better numbers. And your brain goes, oh shit, I can latch onto that. And you got, some of you guys said two and didn't necessarily know exactly what the hell you did. So, but you did 20 divided by 10. So what do I do with these numbers? We did 20 divided by 10. So to solve the original problem, I'm gonna do 97.56 divided by 47. Blah, blah, blah. You guys see what I'm saying? That's the power of solve a simple problem. I'm not changing the problem. I'm just saying, what if the numbers would have just been nicer? Oh, my brain sees what to do now. I'm going to go back and do that with the uglier numbers. You guys kind of with me? This is a very basic example of solve a simpler problem. So let me come back to the problem again. What would have made this an easier problem? If it wasn't there, Jeff. No, you can't choose that option. If you just forgot that problem was there, it would have been better. Not nicer and more triangular. Say again? Not nicer and more triangular. That'll make it harder because then I'm not sure what shape it could be, right? What makes this problem kind of like too big to consider? They're all 180 feet, yeah? So what if we make it 18 feet on the side? You guys with me? Let's try this. Let's pretend that the problem said 18 feet on a side and everything else is the same. Can somebody tell me? So 18 feet on a side. Wow. And I put a post in every corner, correct? And posts have to be how many feet apart going down the side? Six feet apart. So let's say this is zero. My next one is going to be six feet away, yes? Where's my next one going to be? Twelve. And then six more gets me to here, yeah? Let me stop for a minute. But do you see what I'm saying? Did you, did you want to draw it 180 feet and then put one every six? Oh my God, no. So the same thing's gonna happen on every side, correct? Every side's gonna have two between the corners. Do you guys see that? It's much quicker to see that if you give yourself a smaller triangle to work with. That's an example of solve or simpler problem. So that every, one of, every side's gonna work the same way, correct? So this is not the problem though, right? I can solve this one. So how many posts do I need? Uh, 
how's that? You know, I, I, how many? <laughs> how many posts are you? Four, seven, nine. Yes, nine posts. Yes. Okay. Let me stop for a minute. I want you to notice something. If this is going to be every six feet, 18 divided by 6 is 3. Are there three posts on this side? Yes. Are there three posts no, on this no. side? No. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's a little, but you, I, some of you guys might have thought 180 divided by 6 on the original one, right? Because, But do you see how that's kind of not exactly right because you're ignoring the fact that there's one on each side? But if you look at it like this, aren't there three here? Aren't there three here? Aren't there three here? Oh. You would not have been able to see that if you didn't make a smaller problem to work with. You guys kind of follow. The problem they gave us is unwieldy because it's too big. So solve a simple problem is a perfect, cut that shit down. Then you can start to make connections you couldn't make as easily if you had to draw the whole damn thing. So let me see if you guys are with me. Every side has four posts, correct? Don't, don't some of them get recounted. They count them more than once if I do it that way. But I realize every side actually has three. <coughs> let me see if you guys are with me. Every side has three independent posts so that I don't double count anybody. So how many independent posts would there be on each side if it was 108? 30 each, yes? So how many total posts would there be? 90. 90. And how much does each post cost? I don't know why, I was just I could see the whole problem, but I couldn't stop myself. So then 90 times eight? 720. 720 bucks, yeah. You guys said that? So, so uh, in section one, two, one of the methods, so there's three methods in each section. Section one, one has three methods. Section one, two has three methods. Uh, one of the three methods, methods in section one, two is solve a simple problem. Um, so now that you basically did number three, good job, Jeff. Uh, look at number four. I like number four, of course I would. Let me ask you this question, just to get you a little uh, thought process. Can somebody tell me how to write any even number? What's true about any even number? No, four is even, 14 is even. You get divided by two. What's another way to say that? Two is a factor of it, correct? Okay, you guys with me? So, uh, what do we have from algebra that allows me to write an infinite number of numbers with a single expression? Variables. So, one variable I use very often is n. n means natural numbers, one, two, three. How do I make this set become even numbers? I just have to 
you multiply by two. So this is how you write a general even number, 2n. Let me stop for a minute. You guys kind of with me? The defining property of an even number is it has two as a factor. That is the defining property. 2n just shoves two in your face there. It's got two as a, it's gotta be an even number because it's got two as a, as a factor. Oh, what does x mean? X means any number. So it could be 1.783, it could be negative square root of 11.48. Holy shit. We normally use the letter N specifically for natural numbers, N natural numbers. Natural numbers are the things that came naturally to us, one, two, three. Zero was weird shit. We had to invent zero later, but what came naturally to us was one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, of course. Well, those are what be even. But I mean, those would be odd. That doesn't just be even. Those might not be odd. So no, hold on, we're getting to odd next. Is 3n necessarily odd? Because what's a value for, isn't 2 a value for n? Well, what's 3 times 2? Holy shit. So don't freak out. I understand why you would think 3. You would think 2 because 2 is even, but no. 2 must be a factor of it if it's even. Does 3 have to go into it if it's odd? No. no. Does anything have to go into it if it's odd? Does anything go into 7? seven. Just 7. Does 3 go to 9? Oh, but does 3 go to 11? Uh, okay, so. You guys with me? Love you guys so much. I'm almost there. <laughs> how does an even, how does an odd number relate to an even number? Like, give me an odd number. What's the closest even number? I'll take two answers. Four. Four could be them. So if I have an even number, and have I written every even number existence up there? Yes, I have. There they are. There's every even number in existence. How do I make that into an odd number? Add one or subtract one. Are you guys with me? Let me stop right there. Isn't every odd number one away from an even number? I like it. Let me stop for a minute. Why would I want to do minus one specifically? Because what's the lowest even number? Yeah. Lowest even number? Two. two. What's the lowest odd number? Yeah. There we go. And you were, you were like, I know you were So I need to do 2n minus one to make sure I actually get one. You guys with me? <laughs> Again, I love, sorry. I'm not making fun of you guys, but I just love it. People like, yeah, okay. There's all the even numbers, just two times all the natural numbers. I get all the even numbers, yes? Because to be an even number, you have to have two as a factor. Every odd number is one away from an even number, correct? Give me an odd number, 11. It's one away from 12. It's also one away from 10. So I can either do 2n minus 1 or 2n plus 1. Why do I want to do 2n minus 1? So I actually capture 1. If I only add one to the evens, if I only add one to each of these, do I get all the odd numbers? What's the first odd number I get? Three. If I add one to each of these, I get three, five. So let me subtract one, so I start at one. That's all, yeah. So two n minus one is all the odd numbers. So let me do a, a simpler example. Um, when you add an even number and an odd number, what kind of number would you get? If you add an even number to an odd number. What? How do you start to investigate it? How do you start to investigate what I just said? If you add an even number to an odd number, what kind of number do you get? Well, what would you start to do to experiment with this? Take an even number and add it to an odd number. What do you, what do you seem to get? Odd. odd, you seem to get odd. Has anyone proven that it's odd? None of us have proven. Give me an even number. Two, give me an odd number. One, what's two plus one? Three. Give me a bigger even number. 
Six. Give me a big ass odd number. <laughs> 201. 201. What's six plus 201? 207. Okay, so. You guys all went through. That's good to get a feel for it. Have we proven yet that if I take any even number and add it to any odd number, the answer is odd? I have not proven that yet. Because maybe we're just forgetting an example where it doesn't hurt. How do you guys feel though? Does it feel like it's probably going to do this? Okay. So let me show you. Can somebody help me out? How do you write every even number in existence? 2n. And what if I add some odd number? Let me, let me show you how to be careful. If I put 2n minus 1 here, is that any odd number? No, it would be 1 less than this. Yes? Didn't we just add 6 to 201? Let's see if you guys are cool with this. So how do I write some other independent odd number? 2m minus 1. Couldn't this be 6 if n is 3? Couldn't this be 201 if m was 101? So what does every even number look like? Twice some natural number. What does every odd number look like? Twice some natural number minus 1. If you don't want these to be related to each other, they have to be built on a different natural number. If I said this, if that's six, that's freaking five. It can't be whatever it wants to be, yes? Now it can be whatever the hell it wants. It could be six and 201. Okay. So you guys are with me. Let me try this again. 2n, that's an even number, correct? Mm -hmm. Double something minus 1, what kind of number is that? Odd number. Odd number. So the question is, if I take any even number and add it to any odd number, what do I get? And we think the answer is going to be an odd number, correct? We haven't proven it yet. Let me stop for a minute. If I said my odd number was 2n minus 1, it must be 1 less than my even number. What's my even number up there? What's the even number up there? 2n. 2n is my even number. Okay, I desperately, this could represent 10 if n was 5. This could represent 22 if n was 11. So 2n is a number. What kind of number is it? Even, because it has 2 as a factor. So 2m is even also. So when I subtract 1 from it, what kind of number is it now? Odd. And is that one necessarily related to that one? No, because they're both built on different kind of like seed numbers, different natural numbers. Let me stop for a second. Every single odd number looks like what? Twice a natural number minus 1, correct? Isn't that what every odd number looks like? <coughs> twice a natural number minus 1. Let me try this. If I do twice a natural number, that's even. If I subtract 1 from that, that's odd. Yes? So every single odd number looks like twice a natural number minus 1. So if I want to prove that when I add these together, I get an odd number, I know the form my answer has to be in. It's got to be twice a natural number minus 1. Every odd number, how far away from an even number is it? 1. So when I see twice a natural number minus 1, that's odd. That has to be odd, because that's 1 away from an even number. Yes? Looking at these two, do they share any factors? They both have a two, yeah? Can't I take a two out? And what's left? So I just added every even number to every odd number, and I got something that looks like this, yes? And what we just say is true about every odd number. It is twice. Twice. A natural number minus one. Is this odd? There, we proved it. We proved it. 
We didn't take specific examples. I didn't do six plus 201. I did every freaking even number plus every freaking odd number. How do I know the answer is odd? How do I know the answer is odd? Because it's one less than an even number. Say again. That is the answer. So that is my proof that if I take, what is this again? And what does it represent? Every even number. And what's this represent? Every odd number. So if I take any even number and I add it to an odd number, we get an odd number. We get one less than an even number. I like it. Okay. So coming back to this one. Can you guys, here, let's just start with this. Can you do a specific example? No ends, no ends. Pick some numbers and see what you think. Do you see what the student is trying to say? An even number of odd numbers, yes? What does that mean? Um, four threes. Do it again. Four threes. Four threes, sure. It doesn't say they, have, they can't be the same. You can do like three plus 11 plus seven plus five. Is that an even number of odd numbers? Yes. What is three plus 11 plus seven plus five? Three plus 11, 14, seven plus five? 12, 14 plus 12, 26. So I do get an even answer. But again, did we just prove it? No, we showed that it worked in one example. Maybe there's another example it doesn't work for. Yes. So what do you think? Would using a variable strategy work? The funny thing about this question is they want you to say no. And here's why. They want to have an even number of odd numbers. So how many odd numbers do they want? They don't say. Just an even number. Yes? So it's, it's um, this one was, I don't know if you really will agree with me on this, but um, this one was easy. Because I had one even number plus one odd number, yeah? Okay. This one is hard because here's an odd number. Can somebody give me a different odd number? That's the same odd number. I want a different one. Two so n minus one. I want to different. Two so d minus one. Yes. So this is an odd number. So I've had one more. Two l minus one. I want. Do you all agree this is an even number of odd numbers? Yes? You guys with me? Okay. And won't the minus one, minus two, minus, won't that be minus four? I like it. So this will be two m plus n plus d plus l, yes? Minus four. Now, let me ask you this. Is that an even or not number? What's four less than an even number? Is it even or odd? Even. Of course it is, right? How do I get to an odd number? I have to go an odd number of steps away from an even number. So like uh, 12 minus one is odd. 12 minus three is odd. 12 minus five is odd. Yes? So the answer to this question is, On first glance, the answer to this is no, because this is four. Couldn't there be 40? Couldn't there be 40 million? Do you want to write every possible way? Okay. But what you could do, you could do something. Well, I don't want to get too deep. I've already gone too deep into this. And you're all like, God, oh, Jeff, just stop. Um, the important thing I want you to get out of number four is... How do you write an even number? How do you write an odd number? Every single even number, 2n. Every single odd number in existence, 2n minus 1. Okay. Um, what else does it say here? If it is not, what other strategy or strategies might be used? Yeah. I would use use a variable, but it gets a little bit weird. So that's all I'm going to say about it. 
Okay, so I've already introduced one strategy from section one two. That was solve the simpler problem. There's two other strategies. One of them is like number five. And let me ask you guys this. This is going to look very familiar. And thank the gods, this is not going to involve any ends or ends. Okay. I'll take a step away from the step away from the letter shelf. Okay, I'm, I'm, I got you. Can somebody please tell me what the next number is in that sequence? What do you guys think? All right, I got a vote for 10. How did she get 10? So I've established a pattern, correct? The most simple pattern I can see is add three. There could be more than that. In fact, I always get somebody, I'll make a problem like this, and I'll have an answer in mind, and somebody else will see a different pattern. I'm like, oh shit, didn't see that. So if I only give you like two or three numbers, there could be multiple patterns. So let me try to show you an example. Um, yeah, sure, I'll give you, what's the next number? All right, I got a vote for six and a vote for eight. How'd you get six? Plus two plus two, right? How'd you get eight? Times two times two. So if I don't give you enough theater numbers, there could be a lot of different possibilities. Are you guys with me? You've seen probably this before, yes? This idea of find a pattern and then apply it. Okay, I like it. So what do you guys think about this one then? What you got, Jeff? I don't know, something weird. Uh, Do I keep adding or subtracting the same thing? So you eliminate that. And then what's the next thing you try? Maybe instead of adding and subtracting, I'm multiplying or dividing. Do I keep multiplying by the same thing? Yes. What is it I keep multiplying by? So then what's the next number? Positive 48, good guess. So you will see some problems like this, and you should have run across this kind of stuff in your life. So let me give you kind of a famous example. Can anyone tell me what the next number is? If you know it, don't say it. Hold on to it. Let everybody think about it for a moment. Don't tell me the next number, but has anyone ever seen this sequence before? And you're all like, we're not math geeks like you are, man. I don't see sequence. What are you talking about? It's not like you're like, can anyone see? What might be going on? How do I get the next term? I'm not adding the same thing. I'm not multiplying the same thing. Yes. What's one plus one? What's one plus two? What's two plus three? What's five plus eight? I'm sorry, three plus five, eight. Okay. How big is a note card? Three by five? Yes. Five by eight, I guess. Okay. Oh, yeah, I thought that. It's not a great example. Yeah. So, this is called the Fibonacci sequence. What's the next number? 21. Um, and the really weird thing about the sequence is uh, does anyone have an alarm they set to wake up in the morning? Does, does your alarm play music or does it go eh, eh? It goes eh. I used to play music and then I would incorporate that in my dreams and I'd stay asleep and I'm like, that's not good. I was having a great dream about this music and then shit I'm late. Um, so I need the eh, 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 that one. That plays frequencies of sound that you don't find in the sequence. If it sounds nice, you'll find them in the sequence. Um, Fibonacci sequence is insane. You could search the Google search or Bing if you're really silly. You could search and say Fibonacci whatever. Yes? And it will have something. Fibonacci has ties to everything. Um, why is that? So, so this is just somebody playing with numbers, correct? But how does nature work? Doesn't nature grow on itself? Isn't that what the sequence is doing? So there seems to be a fundamental connection between the silly sequence of numbers somebody played with and freaking the real world. 
And I'm not going to go off on it because it goes. It goes. Has anybody ever heard of a golden rectangle? Is anybody in art stuff? Art? Anybody any art? Drawing, painting, and you're like, you can't draw or shit, man. What are you talking about? I know, I know, I'm just curious. Okay. There's something about not putting something in the center, putting an offset. And the distance you put it over is related to the Fibonacci sequence. It's the most aesthetically pleasing thing has something at a position that is relegated by the ratios of the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. What? It's so neat. So Fibonacci sequence is related to almost everything, including the human psyche, what we find aesthetically pleasing. That is silly. I'm sorry, you <laughs> messed up. So I could have a whole freaking semester about Fibonacci sequence, and I'm not gonna suddenly do that. Um, okay. What about what about this? Um, what do you think the next shape would be? So how many sides does this have? Four. And of course, there's nothing that has two sides, so I had to start here. So it seems like every time I'm adding the next side, I can. So what should show up here? Yeah, five-sided figure, right? So the easiest way to make a five-sided figure is just take a square and put a little house, right? You guys got it with me? So you will see four, uh, you will see number sequences. You will see visual sequences in the homework. Um, so let, let's see, let me formalize what we've done here so far. Um, there we go. We've got solve a simpler problem. We've got look for a pattern. Earn, there you go, John. And then the last one, doing this live and I forgot what the hell it was. Is it make a list? I think it's make a list. Yes. You gotta be make a list. Yes. Is it? Is it make a list? Yes. Make a list. So let me see. Uh, let me get you an example of making a list. Bum, 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 bum. Here we go. Perfect. No, not that one. No. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is all right, I guess. So the number 10 can be expressed as the sum of four odd numbers in several ways. Can somebody express 10 as the sum of four odd numbers? Four odd numbers. And they can repeat, right? So anyway, let me start us off. How about one plus one plus one plus seven? Is that 10? <coughs> Did I use four odd numbers? Yes. What's another way I could express 10? Three plus three plus three plus one. Three plus three plus three plus one, yes. You guys with me? Yeah. All right. So we got a different way, yes. Five, three, one, one. Five, three, one, one. Would you agree that we're making a list? Okay, so that's a very kind of silly example of making a list. Um, not my favorite. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. That's gross. Uh, let's see. Oh well, it does. Where's that paper go? There it is. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm trying to think about which order I want to do this in. I want to show you some videos of, of little people trying to do problems. Um, I think, yeah, look at, look at this. Okay. Does anyone have a calculator with them? Okay. 
you have your calculator, do you know how to put in their sixth to the 95th power? So let me show you. Um, if anybody wants to borrow one, you can. We're not going to use them extensively, so you can just watch if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. So, if you have a calculator like this, six, and your to the button looks like a little carrot. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing on the TI calculator. To the 95th power. Now, if you try that, let me see what your calculator says. Mine says this. So let's talk about what this means. I don't know if you guys, can you see that? With all this glare? Oh my God, you can't really see that, can you? Can you guys see that? All right, hold on. <laughs> That's a little better. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, what does, some of those are sweet spot, all right. What does this mean at the end? Someday I'll learn. Just use this dude because it's backlit. Same way on the TI. Uh, six to the 95th power. There we go. Now you can all see it. So what the hell does that mean? Does anyone know what that means? No, it's not the remainder because I'm not dividing. You all agree that 6 to the 95th power is really, really freaking crazy big? So obviously the answer is not 8.4, correct? So you know what this means. This means times 10 to the 73, which we're not going to suddenly talk about scientific. All it means is move the decimal, <laughs> the decimal, move the decimal 73 times this way. That's what that means. Can you see the last digit? Do you understand that you cannot? The last digit is not nine, because aren't there more digits out to the 73rd holy shit? Yes? So how in the world are you going to do this crazy ass problem? Does anyone have a suggestion? I need to know what the last digit is for six to the 95th power. Does anyone have any suggestions as to how to even start to look for that? And you're all like, you're the math boy. Tell me out, what's six to the first? Six. Holy shit. What's six squared? 36. What's six cubed? 216. Six to the fourth. You have 1,296? Yes? What do you guys think? What's the last digit of six to the 95th? Six. Shit, yeah, it's freaking six. Because every time you multiply, it's gonna be 36 times six is gonna end in six times six is gonna end in six, yes? The minute it's six, it's gonna be six forever. Because six times six is 36. You guys with me? Okay, that one was easy. I want you guys to take a moment and see about seven to the 95th. Figure out what the last digit is for 7 to the 95th power. Calculator will not help you directly, but you could certainly do like 7 squared, 7 cubed. Yes? What strategy are we using, obviously? Well, it tells you. We're using patterns. We're trying to see the pattern so we can make a prediction. here in a bit.
All right, what are you guys getting? Let's see. Seven to the first power is seven. Seven squared is 49. Seven cubed is 343. Seven to the fourth is 20. Uh, 20, 22, 2401? Okay. I don't have this, my sevens table memorized, believe it or not. And then what's seven to the fifth? Blah, 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 seven, yes? Okay. So it looks like it starts over again. So every fifth one, it starts over again. So seven to the sixth is going to end in what number? Nine. That's easy because I can just kind of follow the list. So I have to do seven to the 95th. How the shit am I going to do that? Didn't we just say that every fifth one, it starts over again? So what would seven to the 15th end in? Because it's every fifth. You guys got it with me? We've established a pattern, correct? So what would 7 to the 16th do? And did not, because that's the next thing it does. Yes? So if I divide the power by 5, I can see where I am in the list. If it goes in evenly, I'm at 7. If it, so watch this. 7 to the um, 16th. 5 goes into 16 three times with 1 left over. So I must be at the first thing. Yes? Let me think. I'm looking at this right. Yeah, 7 to the 6th would end in 9. Yes. Okay, I like it. Let me write this in a better way. I'm writing it all cramped up. All right, we'll do this like this. So seven to the zero is one. Seven to the first is seven. Seven squared is 49. Seven cubed is 343. Seven to the fourth was 2401. Seven to the fifth was something seven. Yes? Okay. So let me say this a little better. Here we go. Now I got the full thing. Okay, let me back out of it. So it looks like every fourth one, it starts over at one. Okay, so let me say this again. So like seven to the, I just left off my first little dude, poor little guy. Seven to the sixth should end in nine, correct? Because that's the next thing here. Four goes into six once with how many left over? Two. So I must be at the second spot. So this is going to end in nine. So if I have to do seven to the 95th, so every fourth one, it starts over at one. So if I do, what's seven to the 40th power going to end in? One, because that's every fourth one, it starts over again at one. So if I divide by four, the remainder actually tells me where I am in this list. So what's 95 divided by four? Say again? So 23, 0.75, correct? And that three fourths says remainder three. So I must be at the third thing in the list. It must end in a three. So this is a, this happens a lot in mathematics where we look for the cycle of something, something cyclic. So this has a cycle. Every fourth one, it starts over again at one. So if I divide by four, I see where I am in that cycle. So with this problem, it would work the exact same way if I have to do eight, to the 95th, I just start to do a to the zero, a to the first, a squared, <laughs> until it starts over again. And then I see its cycle. Okay. You guys are 
just really like that one. What about number six? Let's see. Oh yeah, look at number six. Okay. So let me ask you guys, so, so adult tickets cost $4, student tickets cost $3, and she's collected $65 so far. Do you think with that information, do you think there's just one answer? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to get to 65, combining four and three, correct? How would you start to get some possible answers? Would make a list help? How do you think you can start to construct a list? I mean, so what is it we don't know? In this problem, what is it we don't know? How many of each, right? We don't have a clue. So could you start to say, uh, is it possible that we've sold no student tickets? Why is that impossible? I really want you to think about this. Why is it impossible I've sold no student tickets, only adult tickets? Four doesn't go to 65. So I know I've sold some of each, because it also is not true for, for students either. So I must have some combination of both, yes? So what kind of list could you start doing? What if you sold one adult ticket? Is that possible? You guys see why not? If I sold only one adult ticket, then the student tickets would have been $61. Three does not go into 61. So do you see how making a list would help? If you had to collect all the possible ways this would be done, are you guys at all with me? So what about two? If I sold, uh, which one was I doing? I forgot. Oh, one adult ticket, no good. What about two adult tickets? Yeah, because that would take it $8, yes? That would be $8 they made from the adults. That would leave $57. Does three go into 57? What's a quick way to see that three goes into 57? Does three go into 60? Oh, yeah, that's easy. So does three go into anything three away from 60? Of course it does. So three goes into 57. Yes? 57 is not obviously divisible by three. But it's three away from 60, so three must go into 57. Does that make any sense? Okay. Also, what's five plus seven? Well, three goes into any number whose digits add up to be a multiple of three. That's another good thing to know. We'll talk about that later this semester. What about part B? Part B gives us more information. So part A, does everybody agree that there's multiple <laughs> answers for part A? Yeah, I could just keep going and make the list and get all the answers. Part B says, I know she sold 20 total tickets. Now could there be multiple different answers? How many things do I not know? Two things. Right? There's two things I don't know from the beginning. How many things do I know? Two things. The total amount of money and the total number of tickets. So whenever you have the same independent information as the things you don't know, that's one answer. It has to be one answer. Does anyone know how to get the answer for part B? Say again, so I? Not quite. So it doesn't work because each ticket could be either worth four or three dollars, correct? Divide by four, see how much you have left, maybe. You could use a variable, yes? Right? So let's see. Discuss whether the new changes the strategy. Okay. So they don't tell you to solve it, which is nice. Would it change our strategy? Yes. If we made a complete list from part A, 
Could we then see which one of those answers part B? All right, let, let's do this. Uh, oh, I keep hiding the paper for myself. There we go. So help me out. It was four bucks for adults, and it was three bucks for kids. Shillings. And 65 total dollars. This is for part A, right? Mm -hmm. So if I had two adults, that would leave $57, yes? And 57 divided by three is 19. That would be 19 kids. Does that add up to be 20 tickets? No. Three adults would be $12, and that takes me down to 53, and three doesn't go into 53. Four adults would be Sixteen dollars, I guess, and sixty-five minus sixteen is forty-nine. Does three go into forty-nine? No. And you just keep going like this. Yes. So five adults would be how much money? Five adults. <coughs> Twenty bucks. How much would we be left to get from the kids? Forty-five. Does three go into forty-five? Yeah. Yes. So that would be five adults, 15 kids. Is that 20 tickets? Okay, good. So if you've completed part A and you made a, a complete list, you can then go find out what's the one time it makes 20 total tickets. And that would be the answer for part B. You could also use algebra. That's a, that's a classic algebra problem. But this is a really good example of, is algebra the only way to get the answer? Hell, it's just one tool. So let me do this before I really um, make you guys hate me more. I'm going to let you watch some little tiny people doing some of this stuff. Uh, i got to turn this off so I don't get copyright strike. Leave me alone. Okay.